What's up guys, today we're going to be building a little cabinet that was commissioned to me by some friends of ours. Now, the first step here is to cut the sides, and so here I am cutting the sides on my miter saw. So this entire project is made out of pine 1x12x8 boards, and I love using pine 1x12x8 because it's just really soft, it's easy to work, and it looks really nice. And this project calls for two 8-foot boards and one 4-foot board of the 1x12. So here I am measuring out some more uh, pine. This is going to make the top and bottom of our cabinet. So here you can see the sides and the top and bottom. So one of my best investments ever in woodworking is the Craig Pocket Hole Jig. I paid $100 for mine at Home Depot, and it's been an amazing tool. I've used it for so many projects, and if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I use it a lot. And if you don't want to pay $100 for a Craig Pocket Hole Jig, they do have a little mini version for like $20. You can get that. It works just fine. So here I am cutting the pocket holes to um, attach the sides to the top and bottom. So I'm putting pocket screws on both sides of the top and bottom, which are going to go into both sides of the, well, sides. So by now you're probably getting bored of watching me cut pocket holes, so let's skip to something else. So right now I'm putting glue on both the top and the bottom, so that way when I, I can glue the top and the bottom together, and the glue is going to really strengthen my cabinet. The screws are just to hold it there for now, but the glue is what's really going to hold. You'll notice that periodically through this project I uh, get a little square and I make sure that everything is square. It's very imperative that this cabinet is square because if it's not, stuff won't line up. And I just love when stuff is square. So I had to break out my little short stubby uh, pocket hole um, screw bit because my long one wouldn't fit inside the cabinet. I'm so glad that I have that. So I just cut a base to fit in the cabinet, and since everything was perfectly square, my base fit in there really, really nice and snug, which is exactly what I wanted. So this is the dry fit, just to make sure that it fits really good, and it does, so now let's put some glue on there and put it in there permanently. So instead of attaching the back pocket screws, I just put them screws in right from the side. I'm not quite sure why I did this, but I did. So whenever you're cutting shelves or something, make sure that you cut it a little bit oversized and sneak up on the line. Because if you cut it a fraction of an inch too short, it looks bad. So here I am drilling yet some more pocket screws to attach the shelves. So guys, this is the final piece. There are several things that I did not record that I'm going to go through here in a second. But I just wanted to say that this was actually a commission piece by some friends of ours. And I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. It's one of the better things that I've done. <laughs> I put a little handle on the front here so that way you can open it easily. And I made it out of pine on my lathe so that way it matched everything else. Um, at Home Depot today I picked up some uh, little hinges which aren't exactly what I was envisioning for this project but it's all I could find couldn't find exactly what I wanted, 
so they're doing okay. And then for the inside, I got a little latch here. Can't remember what it's called. It's like a little ball and a hook design. But the latch works really good. It's kind of like a weathered brass look. And that's just there so the door doesn't swing open if your floor isn't completely level. And really, really happy with that. Really pleased with how that came out. I put some shelves on the inside, which you just saw. And the whole thing is, is assembled with pocket screws and glue. So it's extremely strong. I made sure everything was square before I put it together. And then, I, then finally I just gave it a hit with my random orbit sander and some 150 grit sandpaper. And then I went over everything else with 220 grit sandpaper at the end to make it really, really nice and smooth. Really happy with how this came out. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet, please be sure to subscribe. Uh, also, be, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week.